Hello, welcome back again. Now, is there a difference between a child's growth and development? What exactly is the difference between one child's growth and development you know, from, the others, from the other child? Now, there is a whole lot of difference. Now, every child's growth varies from the other. So you cannot compare one child's growth to the other. Now, when you talk about growth, growth has to do with what our physical size, what we can see. You know, the child is growing big, we can see it. And then now this could be because of what? Um, heredity and all of that. So you cannot what say because this child is three months and then this other child is three months, this one weighs this way and all of that. You cannot ascertain because what there is of course going to be a difference because it varies now same for development now development has to do with what you know as uh, the skills what they can do their intuition and all of that now they are able to hold some things at some point you can say they are developing so there is a difference of course with between what a child's what growth and development and we're going to be learning a whole lot about it in the course of this class now that brings us to our topic for today we would be looking at child development child development this is a very interesting topic you know we've talked about marriage we've talked about pregnancy and childbirth now we want to look at what child development if you've not seen any of these you have to go back and watch the videos so you can be able to do what familiarize and we can be on the same page okay so child development is what we would be looking at today now there's some things you should get familiarized with in the course of this class now some of the things you should be able to know is that by the end of this class you should be able to explain the meaning of growth and development you should be able to explain the meaning of growth and development and also you should be able to state the principles of child development the principles of child development also you should be able to describe the various areas of child development and also outline the stages of child development so sit back we're going to learn a whole lot today now every child every normal child let's put it that way grows and develop that is how it is intended to be that is how nature intends it and how god made it now every normal child must grow and develop now the child passes through the different stages of development from um, infancy from birth infancy and all through to when the person is all grown up now individuals however grow and develop at varying rates remember what i said earlier it's different so you cannot use one person's way of growing or rate of growing to judge the others now it's important to understand the pattern of growth and development of the normal child what is expected at every stage okay so that is what we will be looking at today now what is the meaning of growth now growth is an increase in the physical world size of the whole body or any of its parts when there's a physical increase you know size you can see that now growth can be measured in meters you know in kilograms heights and all of that these are ways in which you can measure growth this is how they can be measured and also let's look at the meaning of development development now development is an increase in skill and complexity of function okay now this goes beyond what you can see okay it goes beyond what you can see when one is developing you can really not say okay ah, see I'm looking out for this thing I'm looking out for this thing as it is with growth growth you can see them you can see the signs you can see oh this baby is growing you know, because you know at three months the baby is doing some things and they must you know at six months almost to a year they're trying to stand up you can see them that is growth now development has to do with how much progress this person is making as part of skill and their complexity in functions okay now how does the person he or she what he or she can do within the mind and body such as holding for the, for, for babies such as holding up the head holding up a toy you know this is development things that they can not do and then they can now hold and gain an understanding you know at three months they should be able to look they can hear sounds they can be able to know what is happening in their environment that's development you know that the baby is actually growing this development in the child at that at three months what is expected is what is happening at six months what is expected is what is happening as you no know, as they progress you see this and then you know oh fine development is 
going on, just as it is with growth. Now, what are the principles of development? Let's look at the principles of development. Now, development in children is predictable. Development in children is predictable. You know, as they go through that stage, you can predict it. Now, it follows a definite pattern because you know what is expected at every stage in time. And when this is not happening, you tend to, you would have to tend to worry, yes, when it's not happening. Now, it should be steady as well. Now, development changes are orderly and progressive in a normal child. It's orderly. You cannot jump one and progress to the other one. It's orderly. You would have to you know, follow it progressively. And also, children differ from each other. You need to take that into consideration. Now, children develop at different rates. Some may be slow and some may be fast. So don't have this. You no, know, there's a tendency when mothers are gathered, hey, oh, my child is already doing this. My child is already doing this. And then you're being like, okay, you're not feeling what they are saying and all of that. You don't have to feel that way because some children are fast while some are slow. This could be because of hereditary factors, so and of nutrition and all of that, and some other factors. So you don't have to feel bad. Some are slow and some are fast. So you have to take note of that and put that into consideration. Now let's look at the factors that influence development. Factors that influence development. Like I said, we're hereditary. Now basically there are two, okay? Um, hereditary, let's look at her hereditary. We're going to look at the two anyway. Hereditary, now this is a tendency for a parent to transfer his or her characteristics to his or her child or children, e.g. color of skin, eyes, nose, etc., and etc. Now, development can be due to what hereditary factor. Now, when a child takes some of these characteristics from mom or dad, and then adds up to his or her own um, um, self as well. Now, it could be color, eyes, nose, and all of that. Now, we have environment as well. The environment is another what factor that influences what the um, that influences development. Now, this includes everything that is outside the child. Example, love. Love. Love is very important. And care that the child receives. This can do what cause development to be fast or slow. Okay? Now, this can be what some of the reasons that can happen to cause its development to be fast or slow. Now, the family where the child is born into can be a factor too in the environment. Then the feeding habits of the child, feeding habits, when one is intentional, good nutrition can also cause uh, to influence development. The toys that the child you know, plays with can also influence. The home surrounding, what the child sees around the environment can, you know, cause development fast as well. Clothing, shelter, etc., etc. So you need to put all of this into consideration before you want to say, oh, this child is not growing or developing fast and all of that. Are all of these things in place? Then if they're in place and it's not as it is, then you, then you would have to, to do a consultation. You need to go to see the doctor. But all of these are factors that need to be considered in the development of a child. Now, what are the areas of development? Let's look at the areas of development. Now, the first one we have is the physical development. Physical development. This is the development of the physical structures and functions. Now, examples are the brain, the muscles, the nerves, the bones, and their functions. Okay, now the physical, that's what takes place. Physical development is the basic of all other aspects of development. Now, every other aspect of development, yes, um, as um, particular, but you see, the physical development is paramount, is the key to the development of a child. Now, where every other thing is what developed that sums the other aspects of development. Now, let's look at the next one, which is the mental word development. Mental. Now, this is the development of intellectual word abilities for the child to be able to assimilate to be able to do or through to 
portray some skills. Now, children come into the world helpless and without knowledge and skills. You know, they come when you uh, when they are born. They don't even know what is happening around them. Where you keep them is where they stay, and then you know they don't have any idea of what is happening around them so it involves ability to think understand solve problems as they progress they are going to be developing mentally to be able to understand the environment to be able to know what is happening to understand your signs when you smile they know that they should smile with you and then know when you move they are moving you know all these are uh, mental developments when a, a child grows Okay, then the next one is social development. Now, social development enables individuals to participate in and enjoy social activities and take interest in people. Now, it is important to give them attention early in life. As a child progresses, social development is key. It's key to see that the child is socially balanced. Now, you have to do what? Let them play socially approved roles. You know, at home, they need to mingle, do some things that, you know, that are socially free. So they can, because they are social beings, you can't take that away from, from them. Now, the development of um, behaviors approved by society or social groups, they should participate, okay? In as much as there are behaviors that are approved in our society and then what social groups, they should be allowed to participate then development of social attitudes you know courtesy to greet and then um, to relate with people in a, in a healthy way okay all these things are things that they should learn as they progress these are what all referred to as what social development then emotional development now this involves words of feelings and how um, they express such feelings okay now for instance by smiling crying frowning etc etc you know expressing emotions as anger and all of that now emotions are the first languages in with, with which parents and infants communicate before the infant acquires speech now this emotional development as you relate with them you know when you smile and then you know suddenly and you're frowning you see the baby the baby tries to understand what is happening you know why you change or why you moved on from smiling to frowning you know at this point in time you are developing their words their emotions to the feelings and how they should express it now when you frown or when you that's why they said a lot of things when you do a lot of things where um infants and babies are this is what they learn and that's how they form this or they develop now when you smile you frown or you're crying and then you know they see you you see when you cry for a baby you see they want to cry as well with you and when you're smiling they want to smile and when you're frowning they just want to be like you are all of this is what emotional development they're trying to do what find their way find balance so this is also how it is expressed okay you know, a child develops in the way he or she feels. You know, a child when a child feels love, feels empathy, that way the child develops because of the way he or she feels. Now we want to look at the stages in child development. Stages in child development. For the first month, what are the things that happens? You know, the first month the head sucks and needs support as they come. You know, you have to be the one to place and put them the way you want their neck to be. Maybe you go and you see the neck is not placed well. You have to go and turn and then support them well. That's what you do. Hands tightly fisted or curled. You see them. They always, you know, their hands are fisted and curled together. They sleep most of the time. They feed and then they cry. That's what they do for the first month, okay? Now you're going to be learning all of this now they stare indefinitely at the surroundings and like eyes do not focus but they can hear sounds but they just stare they're looking you know they're looking everywhere they, they're just around they're wondering where am i what's happening here you know that's what happens with them for the first month these are some of the things you see with uh, a, a child that is born for the first month now the second month what happens what happens in this stage they you know, it can be able to wave arms about, um, weaves 
they weave their arms, you know, about when lying on the bed. You see them doing like this, you know, they can do like this at this point in time when you're sleeping. They can turn their head towards the direction of sound at this point. You know, when you talk and you are this way, they want to turn, they will turn this way as you make sounds and make regular routines such as sleeping all night. Now, at this point, then they can put up some routines. Is either they sleep all through the day or they're sleeping all through the night and the second month. Now, the third month, they look at people and follow their movements. When you're talking to them, they're looking at you. As you go here, they're moving, they're following you, they're trying to understand. The hearing is you know, fairly developed. They can hear very well, almost like fairly, like not so much, but they can hear when movements are made. They want to look at the direction of where or where the sound is coming from. Smiles and enjoy colors and light at, at the third month. Now, they can hold up slightly and also they can hold an object placed in their hands when you put something in their hands they can hold it a little bit at three months and at this point they can be learning to do what to sit then at the fourth month they can hold head erect at this point in time you don't have to support their head it's not you know it's not sagging to any point now at this point at fourth month they can do what hold head head erect they can smile and show excitement yes yeah, when you play with them and you do you know, know all these things we do, maybe booty, 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 and they will smile and then they can show excitement and be very happy in the fourth month. And them eyes can follow moving objects, you know, slowly. At some point, you see some African parents, they do like this, they put like this and they're following it. They are, you know, wherever you take it to, they are following you as well. Then they can reach for their toes. They can carry their toes and bring them close, even towards their mouths. At fourth month, they can do that at the fourth month. Then, the fifth month, they can reach for an object. They can reach for an object. You know, if it's on the bed, they can get it, reach for it, and they can hold it. Then they put everything within reach into the mouth. As you give them whatever it is you are giving them, where is it going to? It's going into their mouth. Okay, at the fifth month, they can be doing it. So are you taking note? Because these are the stages of what? The growth and development. So if you're not seeing or experiencing this at this month that we are listing at, then you need to be, you, you need to know that something might likely be wrong and you need to visit the hospital or something. So just take note. So at the fifth month, they can pull their dress over their face, you know. They can take it up, you know, close it up and then bring it down. They can do that. Then their birth weight, you know, may be doubled from what they wear. They may not be weighing differently because, you know, they are eating and all of that, breast milk and all of that. So their birth weight can be doubled at the fifth month. Then the sixth month, they recognize what constant members they can recognize the constant members of the family the regular members people they can see, they see all the time so they now know mommy they know the daddy they know if they have siblings they know siblings or the helps at home they can now know that when they see them when those ones play with them they know them and they can play with them as well then they can sit without support at this point in time when they're six months they can sit without support you know you don't have to guide them guide them or guard them they can sit then they make distinguishable sounds when they are six um, in the six month then hands and eyes work more together okay the hands work more and then the eyes work more now they can see they can look when you say something they know where to look and find you okay now this is what is expected in the sixth month now from the seventh to eighth month what is expected is that they can sit confidently and they can crawl so they learn to start crawling they can crawl very well at this point in time and also they can use their toys freely so you can put a whole lot of toys in front of them to get them busy and they can be playing with it and doing a whole lot of things with their toes because they can play with it hold it and do a whole lot with them now they can transfer objects from one hand to another they can pick this one put it here and put this one here you see them trying to pack a whole lot and they're not gathering all at the same time so it's very funny watching them do a whole lot at this um, point when they are uh, you know at the seven to eight months watching them do a whole lot of that then they begin to associate with words you uh, know with people ideas or objects you know when they say mama they know that's mama that's papa dada and all of these you know sounds and all of that here it's beginning to form and come along 
Then the 9th to 12th month, the 9th to 12th month, at this point in time, they crawl very well. They can crawl very well. They can stand holding onto objects, okay? They learn to tend to stand by holding onto objects and they stand. And then, gradually, they can stand unaided. They can stand unaided. You know, they stand and they stay without holding anything. And everybody in the house will scream, oh, good, come, 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 come. And then, gradually, what happens? They take their first step. And they move and then everybody's screaming because it's, it's it's a thing of joy to see them move at their first um taking their first step okay it, a lot of people look forward to it and they take videos of it memories of it at this point in time some even do it earlier than this but it is obtainable in the ninth to twelve month that they take their first step then so if it doesn't happen in ninth month or the tenth month the eleventh month it could happen in the twelfth month that's why it is nine to twelve month some children work even at the eighth or ninth month so it is between the nine to twelve month that all of these should happen that is why they will tell some of them that have not started working if you don't work before your birthday will not do, will not say we won't mark your birthday we won't celebrate your birthday and somehow somehow before their birthdays for most of them except they are no they are medical conditions they do work before that time so and them understand some words and can say very few they understand some words and they can say very few of them so these are the things that are expected at every stage of what development so you need to follow through okay so now there's something that happens at 12 months there's a question that usually comes up with investor you know when the child stays um at 12 months when the child stays you know, um, at the surrounding, like he doesn't know what is happening at 12 months, then there's a problem because that's not what is supposed to be happening at the 12 month. That is what is supposed to be happening at the first month, not at the 12 month. So when it happens at the 12 month, that a child is staring um, unconsciously or staring like what is happening here at the 12 month and there's a problem, then you need to go see a doctor. So all of these are the things that happen when a child is developing properly. Now, what are the conditions necessary for child development? The conditions necessary for child development. Let's look at some of them. Okay, love and care from family. Love and care from family. Now, this is very, very important. When a child is loved and well taken care of the family, the child is going to grow. The child is going to grow. A child knows when he or she is loved when they love them in the home you see them they know that clothing is another thing okay that affects that children need clothing that is suitable for different weather conditions you need to make sure to ensure that you have a whole lot of that to keep them healthy then exercise is important as well the child needs plenty of opportunities for exercise as you're growing they're growing they need to do what exercise to make their bones stronger and get them healthy. Now rest, children are very active and they grow rapidly, so they need enough time to rest, adequate time to rest. You need to make sure they are resting a lot. You need to plan it in such a way that they rest, they take out time to rest because it's very important. Rest aids growth. When you rest, you're growing and then you can develop properly. So rest is very important. And also medical care is very, very important. You need to let them go for medical checkups. Don't miss what the vaccinations, immunizations, don't miss it out. You must make sure you take them. Don't skip days and make sure they go for these checkups. Okay, let's visit exam guide to see what we have learned today. Okay, let's look at this question. At what month does a child attain a good sitting posture? At what month does a child attain a good sitting posture? A, we have one. B, we have two. C, we have three. D, we have four. E, we have six. So it is at six months that a child attains a good sitting posture posture at this point in time the child sits on aided okay so it at six months a child attains good sitting posture even if the child tries sitting from three months and 
upward, but at six months, the child should be able to do what sits accurately. Mental develop. Oh, let's look at this question. Mental development of a growing child is described by the following abilities, except increase in birth weight and walk, make distinguishable sounds, recognize constant members of the family, smile and show excitement, follow moving objects with um, his or her eyes. Okay. Now, mental development has to do with all of these, except increase in birth weight and walk now mental has to do with every other thing the baby can be able to make distinguishable sounds recognize constant members of the family smile and show excitement follow moving objects with his or her eyes now all of these are mental word development now increase in birth and weight and work is not part of it which is also an aspect of um physical development but it hasn't it has nothing to do with mental development so the correct answer here is a Okay, let's look at this question finally. Two major factors that influence child's development are dash and dash. The two major factors that influence child's development are dash and dash. Okay, you remember we talked about it in today's class. So what are they? Feeding, is it feeding? Heredity, is it exercise and environment? Is it love and toy? Is it language and love? Or is it heredity and what environment? I'm sure you remember that, isn't it? Now, the answer is what? E, heredity and what? Environment. These are the two major factors that influences a child's development. So, the correct answer is what? Heredity and what? The environment.